Hey guys, I'm California architect Steve Brundell. Thanks to support and encouragement from my parents and an obsession with houses, I chose this fascinating profession. You see, I grew up in a wealthy but dusty West Texas oil town, and more than a few residents were able to afford to build spectacular homes. Nearly every Sunday afternoon as I was growing up, my parents and I would hop into the car and drive around to look at the new houses under construction and also visit a few others that were on the market. I was in heaven. Since that time, I went to architecture school in Texas, studied in Europe, and have lived on the east and west coast of the United States. What I have discovered is that marvelous architecture surrounds us no matter where we live. If you also love this topic, join me on The Sunday Drive a journey to discover what defines the architecture of a house and from where its inspiration stems. On the Sunday drive this week, we came across this charming Monterey Colonial in Palo Alto, California. Though the term Monterey Colonial is not familiar to most people, the format of the style is frequent in California suburbs built from the 1920s to the 1950s. Other areas of the United States, especially Texas, adopted the theme in modest numbers. The second floor balcony, often cantilevered, across the front elevation marks the essential distinguishing trait of the Monterey Colonial. Origins of the style trace to the Larkin House, built in the middle of the 19th century in Monterey, California. The two-story Spanish-inspired adobe structure served as a business on the ground level and a residence on the second floor with a wraparound balcony. The proprietor of the Larkin House drew inspiration for the covered porch from his travels to Caribbean locations and French-American settlements in the southeastern United States by observing dwellings that employed the second floor balcony. The balcony served as a shading device and a place to catch a breeze long before the invention of air conditioning. The colonial aspect of the style entered the equation as New England immigrants, arriving to profit from the California gold rush, interpreted the Monterey theme by overlaying classically rooted colonial and Greek revival details. The style fermented in the 20th century with variations incorporating all or any influences from Spanish, French, and Anglo-New England architecture with the signature balcony defining the theme. The two-story stacked rectangular plan of the Monterey Colonial delivers a confident composition alluding to its influence from the colonial revival style. The balcony that runs across most or all of the second level produces an indelible and charming characteristic, yet maintains appropriate skill from its classical inspiration. Though the roots imply formality, the delineation of the forms and massing of the balcony produce an informal ambience. The configuration of elements and windows establish a light rhythm, and the centered entrance door balances the elevation. The thick stucco walls appear sturdy and stable, and the balcony's cantilevered floor joists define its structural expression. The form of the Monterey Colonial rests close to the ground with either a low crawl space or concrete slab foundation. More elaborate variations of the style have extensions of one or two stories from the main body of the house, but a central two-level mass with a balcony distinguishes the theme Elevations host centered and ordered door and window openings, even on room extensions found in other variations of the style. A principal gabled roof that includes a cover to the balcony caps this example, but Larkin's original has a hipped roof design, so either type is appropriate for the Monterey Colonial as long as the main roof extends over the balcony. 20th century versions across the United States of the Monterey Colonial style tend to resemble other colonial revival variations more than their 19th century ancestors. Six panel entrance doors and multiple pane double hung windows seen in different traditional architecture provide fenestration in the Monterey Colonial. Narrow French doors lead from second level spaces to upper level balconies. Windows often extend to floor level to achieve the same effect as the French doors. Balcony railings tend to screen upper floor rooms, which provides privacy for bedrooms usually located on the top level. Shade from the balcony roof and balcony floor deliver a sheltering void of space that lends to the intimacy of the theme. Monterey Colonial materials 
lean toward the rustic, producing a casual impression over their more formal colonial rival cousins. The Palo Alto example exhibits a clay roof tile, alluding to its Spanish architectural connection. Wood shingles, as well as metal roof coverings, are also used in the Monterey style. Walls clad in white stucco relate directly to the original Larkin adobe. Brick, sometimes painted, and several different wood siding materials mix on some examples of the style. Short eaves with exposed rafters complete a tidy roof-to-wall juncture and reflect the exposed floor joists that cantilevered to form the balcony floor structure. Depending on the specific Monterey colonial example, details for railings, columns, and brackets vary from primary wood forms, as in the Palo Alto house, to elaborate carved wood or wrought iron Spanish or French Creole inspired designs. Chimneys usually rise to tapered or narrowed ordinary brick squares or rectangles. Look for a Monterey Colonial design in your neighborhood. You could discover more examples of this beautiful California-rooted style than you believed existed in your town.